Okay, so I'm doing this uh, video about using a kick drum to control flashing lights in a performance. So I try to look at this from all different angles. Um, the drummer may have an electronic drum set, which is putting out MIDI signals, or they may have an acoustic drum set. So I tried to look at it from different angles. So let's take a look at first of our inputs and outputs. So first of all, I'm going to approach it from a MIDI standpoint. Let's assume the drummer has a a MIDI drum set where they can, besides sending a signal to the brain for what sound they need, they can also do a, a MIDI through and send a signal to the computer. So you need to have, of course, a MIDI interface on your computer that's running QLC+. Just a note here, I would make sure that you have your MIDI interface installed and running before you start QLC+, because sometimes it doesn't see it if you install it after you're already starting the program. So install your MIDI interface first, then start QLC+. And in my uh, case here, I don't have a kick drum hooked up, but I'm using my Nano Control 2 as my input up here. So that's going to be my device that's sending MIDI, MIDI signals to uh, QLC+. Plus. Uh, let's take a look at the fixtures. So I picked fixtures that have an intensity channel on them. So these are uh, Chauvet Slim Par 56s. Channels 1, 2, 3 are red, green, and blue. We don't need the color macro, strobe, or mode. And then channel 7 is your dimmer mode reason I did that so that we're going to be able to control that intensity channel separate from the color channels. And uh, we'll actually use the kick drum to control the intensity channel to make the lights come on and off. So if you have lights that don't have an intensity channel, I'm going to do another video showing you how to work around that using loopback. But let's assume that you have lights uh, you know, using an intensity channel. And if you don't have LEDs, if you're just using plain incandescent lights, then all you need is the intensity channel to kick them on, up, uh, on and off. All right, let's take a look at my functions. So here I did my colors. So Slim Par Aqua is green and blue is up, blue, green, pink, red, and then yellow. You can see my different colors. And down here is my intensity channel for that. So I've created those and I can use that. And let's take a look at a virtual console. So these buttons here are controlling my colors. And you'll want to put these in a solo frame, which is the red frame when you create it. Put your buttons in here. And the reason for that is, let's we'll bring up the mini monitor here. So in a solo frame, it only allows you to press one button at a time. So it automatically, when you press a, a new button, it automatically shuts the other button off. So that makes it a little bit easier here to select your colors that you want to have flashing from the quick uh, kick drum. Now I'm assuming that you're going to have a um, somebody operating this, or maybe the drummer himself is also responsible for operating lights. So they're going to be able to select the color, or your lighting person can select the color for you over here. Now, as far as the intensity goes, they have three different ways of getting that intensity from coming on. I just show you all three different ways. You just need to pick one and decide which one you're going to do. First way would be to use a flash button. So Double click this. The function that I'm controlling is the slim par 100%. So, you know, I went in here and selected my function from the intensity. I did slim par 100% and said OK. So that is the function that's being controlled. And then I used flash function here, which means that when I press this button, only when I hold the button on will the light stay on. When I release the button, the light's going to go off. And then finally, I'm using my uh, Korg Nano Control. And the easiest thing here, again, is just click on Auto Detect, give your kick drum one kick, and then it should automatically pick up what, to in, um, what channel it's broadcasting that note on, note off message on, and then you'll be set to go. So let's take a look with the flash function, and we'll do, let's go pink. So our color is on. Now when I do flash, when I hold the button on, you can see the intensity level come up to full, and then when I release it, it goes off. So on, off, on, off, on, off. Now I use my mouse, but I can also use my Korg Nano Control to do that. On, off, on, off, on, off. Now my thought was, I'm not sure if that's going to be long enough. A, a, a kick drum note on, note off signal would be pretty rapid. It's just going to be like a, a quick pop, something like that. And I wasn't sure if that's going to be on long enough to give you light. It may not like it. You may need the light to stay on a little bit longer 
to get an actual good intensity from the light. Just giving it a quick signal like that may give you something really, really dim. My other option here to fix that situation is I created a sequence. Let's go back and take a look at functions. So I called this slimpar flash. So what I did is in my sequence, I did the slimpar to come on and stay on for 250 milliseconds, which would be a quarter of a second, and then go off. Make sure you use your step duration per step so you can you know, type in that duration at 250 milliseconds. Then of course you use your, your clock here and I do the hold time is 250 milliseconds, all right? And then the slim par off is just off from there. And this is gonna be single shot, it's not gonna be looped. So in other words, this will fire one time and then it's done. And if you watch down here, you'll watch the intensity jump when I fire it. Boom, quarter of a second, and it goes off and it fires one time. Let's do that one more time. Boom, off and on. So now what I'm going to do when we go over to the virtual console, I'm going to use, I covered up my things, here we go. I'm going to use the SlimPAR sequence to trigger that. So let's go in run mode, and I'll do pink again. And when I click this button, it triggers that sequence, and you'll notice that the intensity comes on for a quarter of a second and then goes away. Comes on for a quarter of a second and goes away. And again, I have that button triggered by pressing a button on my nanocontroller. So I can do that, press it, it goes away, press it, it goes away. So you get a little bit longer flash than maybe you would if you were using activating this button over here because you're telling it to actually stay on for a quarter of a second. I was thinking that might be a good amount of time and would still you allow still allow you to kick your bass drum fairly frequently and still kind of get a flashing thing going here on and off on and off. You might have to experiment with that duration time in there to see what works best for you. But this will basically get you a pink flash um, every time you uh, kick that kick drum. All right, then the other possibility is that you could do a toggle on and off with that. So we go to the toggle switch. We'll double click on this one. So again, I'm doing slim par 100%. The difference over here is I'm doing toggle function, so it's going to go on and off, on and off. Okay? And by the way, when you do the slim par sequence, you can keep it a toggle function it'll automatically turn itself off because that sequence runs once it's single shot and then done. So toggle sequence, and I'm running SlimPAR 100%. And again, I'd assign a MIDI channel to that to make that run. Uh, the difference is now that instead of flashing, what it's gonna do is, first time you kick the kick drum, the lights would come on. Next time you kick, they go off. On, off, on, off on off and again you can assign that to a MIDI channel so your kick drum is is uh, initiating it on off on off on off on off on off so you know that's going to give you a flash every other time you kick the drum so that's a possibility to, there too if that's something that you would want and um, the only problem with this I don't think you'd be able to switch in a performance back and forth because your kick drum is only giving you one MIDI note on, note off message because I'm using two different, three different MIDI note off, note on messages to do this here. That's how I'm operating my buttons independently like that. So, so I think you'd probably have to choose which way you want to go here when you're setting up your MIDI. Okay, now let's say that you don't have, um, uh, you're using a regular acoustic drum set and you want to do the same kind of thing. You want to um, initiate uh, the flashing by using an audio signal. So what I have set up here, uh, I'm just using a regular microphone. I'm gonna do a, do a little beatboxing here. I'm using uh, this interface here as an MXL mic made. They run around like $69. The nice thing about these, they're, they're compact. They're about um, eight inches long. So it's not like having a big mini interface and you just, plug your um, mic microphone in one end of it and the other end is a USB. It does supply phantom power, so if you have a condenser mic, you can use that with that. I keep this in my pack, it's real handy because uh, rather than having a dedicated USB microphone, 
that the microphone goes bad and you have to go buy another USB. I can use any microphone with this. I can use a dynamic or I can use a Electrack condenser, whatever, it'll supply the power. So whatever microphone I have handy, I can plug in there and away I go. So that's what I'm using. So let's take a look at the inputs and outputs over here. Um, on the audio side, you can see that I have microphone USB audio selected as my input. And you can go down here, I can do a little test. I'll turn this on and go boom, choo, 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 choo. Little beatboxing, so you can see that the signal is coming in down here. And we'll turn that off. So now what I've done is you do this audio control, which is put in place by clicking on the microphone. Then you go double click the audio control, and I basically told it uh, look at in the uh, you can increase or decrease the number of bands that are in here, frequency bands. I reduced it down to five because I really only need the one frequency band because I'm going to be using my kick drum. And I said zero hertz to 1000 hertz. That should definitely be in the area of a kick drum. And I'm assigning this to an actual, well, when you assign this, I'm actually going to assign it to a button. So I assigned it to the Slim Par flash button. So when this activates, it's going to do the same thing as if my MIDI was pressing the Slim Par flash button up there. And um, I, I knocked the threshold down to about 19% or so, so uh, it would make sure that it caught it every time. Uh, I don't know how good the sensitivity is on this. You'd have to uh, check it out. But I basically want it to catch every time, so it's not just like when I stomp real hard. So uh, that's where we are here. And then I just say OK. Now. One little thing here that's a note that's very important, and I discovered this. Let me bring my MIDI monitor back up. In order to activate this audio control, even though we're in run mode now and it so shows a green check mark, you need to click up here. Now it's activated, and you can see while I'm talking on this microphone the recording, it's actually coming in also as frequency signals on there. Um, I don't think that's in the original instructions. It was something I was looking for. It's like, why isn't this working? Yeah, when you go to run mode, don't forget to click in the box to ag activate. And as you can see, I'm talking is act actually activating the flash button up here because that's what it's been attached to. So I'll pick my pink again. And we're pink, and I'm going to beatbox. And again, this is activating the flash button. So watch. Do, 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 do. So you could use that also then. You could use the audio control and just put a microphone on the adapter and have that coming into your QLC computer and use that to actually um, make the flash button work. All right, hopefully this helps you out in uh, setting that up. If anybody have any further questions about anything that I did on here, feel free uh, to email me.